This is Cliff Mass, and welcome to my weather podcast. Each week, I talk about current weather, provide a forecast for the weekend and beyond, and give you more details about an interesting weather phenomenon. Welcome to my forecast on Friday, July 30th. Well, this is going to be a week of major weather contrasts. I mean jarring contrasts. We start with a mini heat wave with temperatures today in western Washington rising to around 90 degrees Fahrenheit, even the lowest 90s away from the water. But it'll be cooler near the sound and much cooler over northwest Washington where 70s and and lower 80s will rain. Now, eastern Washington is another story. Uh, Their highs will be in the lower 100s, up as high as 105 throughout the weekend. Now, let's turn to Saturday. Uh, Saturday is going to be warm, perhaps a touch cooler than today, with upper 80s around uh, southern central Puget Sound. Um, And so I think it will be warm on Saturday, no doubt about that, and, and continued warm in eastern Washington. Now, what about precipitation? As I noted in my last blog, a tongue of moisture will be pulled northward out of the southwest U.S. into eastern Oregon and Washington. We are now in the period of the southwest monsoon, also called the North American monsoon, in which moisture from the Gulf of Mexico gets pulled northward into the western United States, We're talking about Arizona, Nevada, and Colorado. And this moisture can often produce thunderstorms uh, and heavy precipitation. Now, sometimes, like this weekend, the eastern portion of the northwest gets a piece of this monsoon moisture. So if you are traveling around eastern Washington or Oregon on Saturday or Sunday, don't be surprised if you get hit by thunderstorms and some rain. I think it's quite probable there'll be scattered thunderstorms, some quite strong in eastern Oregon and to some degree eastern Washington. And then there's Sunday. On Sunday, marine air will push into western Washington. We call this an onshore marine push. So I expect temperatures to fall considerably on Sunday west of the Cascade Crest to perhaps around 80 degrees. So considerably cooler, maybe even upper 70s. Now then there's the smoke issue. With strong southerly flow aloft, and that's what's associated with that moisture coming out of the southwest, with strong southerly flow aloft, some smoke from California, California and Oregon will push in over western Oregon and Washington. So you will notice this on Saturday if you're living in those regions. Uh, The sky is going to haze out, and it'll get that milky look to it that's associated with smoke. Now, the best models we have, like the NOAA HER model, HER smoke, indicates that the smoke will stay aloft over Washington, Oregon. So the smoke will be up there, but there'll be cooler and cleaner marine air at low levels. So I think air quality at the surface should remain fine for the heavily populated Portland to Vancouver area. Now let's go into the week and things get quite interesting. Monday through Wednesday should be uneventful with temperatures in the lower 80s and lots of sun. But everything changes later in the week. And I mean changes. Um, Thursday and Friday, a, a major, the first major weather system of the fall will reach our coast, and it'll spread cooler temperatures, precipitation over western Washington and southwest BC. So I think there will be some rain, some showers, Thursday and Friday. Okay, I, I can't get the timing exact right now, but it's going to happen. Now temperatures on some of these days will barely get into the 70s. So we are going to really cool off to below normal temperatures. Let's call it the big cool. Uh, It's kind of early. Normally, it it waits till the third or fourth week of August to happen, but it's happening early this year. It will feel really good after the heat that we've experienced the last month. Thanks for listening. 
Weather doesn't end with the forecast. Now let's talk about the special weather topic of the week. We may be seeing a lot of thunderstorms east and over the Cascade Crest during the next few days. So let's talk about thunderstorms in our region. One of the key aspects of, of the Northwest is that we have far fewer number of thunderstorms and weaker thunderstorms than most regions of the United States. Uh, generally, in any location on, in western Washington and Oregon, we typically have 10 thunderstorms or less per year. Contrast this to the southeast United States, where they can have 10 times more. Eastern Washington and Oregon typically have about 10 to 20 thunderstorms per year. So it's, it's a little bit more than Western Washington. Now, the question you really must ask is why are we so thunderstorm poor, especially west of the Cascade Crest? Well, to understand this, consider that thunderstorms depend on atmospheric instability, also known as convection. Um, if you want to see an analog to this, Take a look at your cereal pot when you have some hot cereal uh, on top of the on top of the stove. You look in your saucepan, it's heated from below, and you see some cereal moving up and some moving down. That's what convection looks like. That's what instability looks like. And the same thing can happen in the atmosphere. To get instability or convection in the atmosphere, we need temperature to decrease rapidly with height. For temperature to fall to rapidly with height. This is known as a large lapse rate in, in the business. Now, normally large lapse rates during the summer come from strong solar heating at the surface. The sun heats the surface a lot, much more than the atmosphere above, so you develop a large temperature change with height. So that's good for thunderstorms. Another thing that helps is bountiful water vapor. Water vapor is very useful since water vapor can condense in rising air. So you have rising air in the convection, uh, the air cools the saturation, some of the water condenses out, and when the water condenses out, it releases heat called latent heat. Okay, so we want strong heating at the surface, and we want lots of water vapor to get convection. Unfortunately, Western Washington is a very poor place to find these essential ingredients for convection or thunderstorms. We are downstream of the cool Pacific Ocean, and the air tends to move in over the from the ocean over Western Washington, Oregon. So it's hard to get our air at the surface to be warmed up a lot because we have this cool air coming in off the ocean. That's bad for business. Um, another problem is that cool air can't pick up as much water vapor as warm air. So since our, our air has been over the cool water, even though it's over water, it still can't pick up much water vapor. So we don't have much water vapor either coming in at low levels. Now, eastern Washington is a better place for thunderstorms because the Cascades are tall enough that they can reduce the cool marine air influence. So the, the Cascades has a blocking effect at low levels. So, so they don't get cooled as much for, because of the ocean. So you can have big temperature changes with height. The surface can heat much more over eastern Washington than over western Washington. So that's good. But the problem with eastern Washington thunderstorms is that normally eastern Washington is dry. It lacks much water vapor in the air. But all of this changes during the southwest monsoon season during the summer, or also, also called the North American monsoon. During these periods, high pressure somewhere around the Four Corners region of the United States and the southwest results in a plume of moisture moving up from the Gulf of Mexico and then swinging over the southwest and then up into our region, and particularly the eastern part of our region. So during this period, the ingredients for thunderstorms are there over eastern Oregon and Washington. They can heat up at the surface, they have moisture coming in, it's all good. And so they are prime for thunderstorms. 
and this will happen over this weekend. Now, the southwest monsoon, or the North American monsoon, is most active from the end of June to mid to late August. And the monsoon region, the monsoon period, is the wettest period over the year over the southwest United States. So if you wonder why Phoenix is wetter than Seattle in July, blame the southwest monsoon. Now, western Washington, through the weekend, will remain under the influence of low-level marine air. So don't expect too many thunderstorms west of the Cascade Crest. It's possible, but it's low probability. Now, there's an issue we have to talk about, and that's wildfires. Although rain from scattered thunderstorms is welcome, and that's certainly going to be nice for in eastern Washington, the associated lightning can start wildfires. And quite honestly, uh, lightning is a major wildfire initiator here in our region, Uh, particularly when lightning strikes in in places like up up in terrain, which are hard to get to. Very frequently, lightning will start a smoldering fire that can lay in waiting and then burst out into a major conflagration as temperatures warm subsequently and the thunderstorm period's over. Anyway, let's watch the radar. We'll watch the satellite pictures during during this weekend, and we'll be seeing some thunderstorm activity. I can pretty much guarantee it. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to my podcast. Feel free to send me your questions or any topics you would like me to cover. This podcast will be available every Friday morning on my blog and major podcast platforms. If you would like to support this podcast, feel free to use the Patreon link on my blog. See you next time.